welcome to another episode of 1923 Main Street. Home of the Daddy Daughter Disney Travel Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Mike Bellobradic. And I'm Amelia Bellobradic. And today we're going to be talking about some Disney travel tips and trivia. Yes, this is our year end and I guess year beginning episode all in one because this is the episode that crosses over the New Year's week. So happy New Year's to everyone who's listening this week and we hope you had a great Christmas as well and listen to our Christmas themed episode last week. But we thought, you know what? Let's have some fun at the end of the year. So we're not going to do our boring old Disney travel tips that everybody does. If We have lists of those as well. But this, we're just going to give you a few of our favorite... Most important tips. Yeah, most important and probably not very common. Things you may not have heard before, at least not very often. And we're going to intersperse that with... 10 trivia questions. Walt Disney World trivia. Now, I'm going to ask Amelia these questions. She has not heard these questions, and I'm curious to see how many of these she gets right. And you can play along at home as you're listening. But let's jump in with our first Disney travel tip. And what is our travel tip? And do you remember occasions where... This tip has come into play. The pay it forward. The pay it forward tip. And what does that mean? In your your words, how would you describe it? There's lots of things that not necessarily just Disney World, but also at Disney hotels. Like we've done this a lot at Vero Beach. Yes. But if you buy things that you can't necessarily take home, and instead of like throwing them out, give it to someone else. Like why not? And then they'll probably pass it on. And then more people will get your money's worth. Exactly. And we've had... You know, some sort of fun doing this. So what are a couple of examples? Now, Disney Barrow Beach, I will agree, just because that if you haven't been to that resort, and we're going to do an episode on it soon, mm-hmm. it is a wonderful beachfront resort uh, just north of the city of Vero Beach in Florida and just south of Sebastian Inlet. Beautiful spot mm-hmm. right on the beach, but it's unlike the park resorts because you have, of course, Atlantic Ocean there. So what do we like to buy when we go to Vero Beach? You buy boogie boards. And I mean, if you're from there, you can obviously bring surfboards and stuff, but we're, we're not. So. Yeah, so we buy, <laughs> we usually buy uh, at least one boogie board every trip. But... And they're fun because the waves are great there, except we can't exactly bring them home. I mean, yeah, because remember, (laughs) we're flying back to Canada and I mean, we could technically, but... Too much work. They're big. They don't fit into a suitcase. And for $8, it's really not worth it. Yeah, but you know, you can get them for pretty cheap if you shop around. So we will buy it brand new and use it usually, you know, three, four days, whatever. So it's basically still brand new. And they're not too expensive too, so... Yeah, and then at the end, I remember one in particular. It was a girl's birthday. Yeah, you do remember. Why don't you tell that story? Because this is true paying it forward Disney style, and you really make someone's day. Basically, one time, I think I was 9 or 10, and we were trying to find out who to give it to, and we saw this family, and it was this little girl who's probably around my age, and it was her birthday. We didn't know that, yeah. And we decided, ha! A perfect gift. So yeah, it's here. We, what we usually do is we're checking. It's the day we're checking out, and typically with Vero Beach, we combine it with a Walt Disney World vacation. So we'll do four or five nights at Vero Beach, yeah. and then we'll drive back up to Orlando because that's where we fly into, and then we spend a few nights at Walt Disney World. Yeah. And so we don't want to take the boogie board there. I mean, I guess you could use yeah, it in a but- pool. But we walk down to the beach typically on the morning when we're leaving, and we try to find hmm. Where's someone <laughs> who looks like they will enjoy this? Yeah, and that particular day, that girl was out there with her family on the raft. There weren't there many people in the water yet. It was hot already. And we called her in. and <laughs> She's probably like, what is this person doing? And then we heard her scream out after, I think she was talking to her family. And she said, yeah. and it's my birthday. And then we <laughs> thought, oh, that's even better. So that was real. Like, listen, this, my friends, is the real Disney magic, I think. And we've also done it with beach chairs. Yeah. There was one, we don't do that, buy those anymore, but there was one year we bought those little yeah. sort of beachy chairs because mm-hmm. there are no seams. Yeah. <laughs> if you haven't had the, Ooh. we'll talk about that in our episode, the beach bugs, sand fleas, whatever they are, they are not friendly. So we thought, let's I'm try these beach chairs. already. <laughs> See if, they, yeah, you're getting itchy already. And we're going to go into tips for all of this in our Vero Beach episode, but we we wanted to try getting ourselves off the sand to see if that helped. It didn't. 
but we did gift those beach chairs as well. So, and, and it's not just at Vero Beach. There's mm-hmm. other ones. I have not personally done this. This would be a lot more expensive than an $8 boogie board, but you know. Yeah, but it's still, that's why I appreciate it because I was just reading it on a uh, Disney board somewhere once and it was fridges. So we, as you know, we only stay in deluxe resort hotels. We've never stayed in a moderate or a value. But, Don't intend to. But I did, but I do know of value resort guests who have bought mini fridges for their room. And, and we are, if you listen to our show, you know, we are all about buying groceries just to round out your other dining options. But these people bought a mini fridge from Costco or wherever, you know, less than $100, and then they really? gift that. So the next people checking in or somebody else they ask, and so they pass this mini fridge around. So there's probably lots of things you can do this for. So just bear that in mind. I think this is the real magic of Disney vacation mm-hmm. when you, you know, pay it forward somehow. Wouldn't that be nice to just like walk in to when you don't expect to have anything and it's like, well, hey, there's a mini fridge here. Well, yeah, you can't really leave it in the room. You have to actually talk to the guests and somehow no, arrange like, it. No, but like, well, you're walking in, walking in the lobby, and then somehow some random person's like, hey, want a mini fridge? Exactly, if they're checking in. That's how you do it. You find people. For that one, you'd have to find them before they check in. When we're doing, you know, boogie boards or any other stuff you may have purchased for the trip you don't want to take home that, you know, wasn't a huge value. Yeah. Pay it forward and people love it. And, you know, you feel good, they feel good, and it's a win-win all around. So that is our first Disney travel tip that you don't hear that often. Pay it forward Disney style. All right, before we move to number two of three tips, I'm going to hit you, Amelia, with the first three Walt Disney World trivia questions. And I really don't know how many of these you know, so I'm going to keep score. But I won't hold it over your head. All right. Are you ready? And I, I will say, as I was, some of these I knew, so I made them up, but there's some I researched and I did not know the answers myself. Well, then how would you expect me to know? Maybe you're smarter than me on some of these trivia things. I know. Sure, of course. Probably not That's possible. Like... All right. Let's dive in. Question number one. Are you ready? Yes. What is the most popular food item across all Disney parks globally? It is... I will. Well, I'm sure you can sort of. I want to guess. say popcorn. So I don't want <laughs> you don't have to answer. Like think it through. But I was going to say you're on the right track. It's something like, like that. It's like yeah, it's one of those snack cart yes. things. Yes, it is. What is it globally? Number one. It's either like popcorn or pretzels. I want. Is it one of the two? Would Would you like to give me a final answer? Say popcorn. <laughs> That is incorrect. Really? And I might have said that too. This is one I did not know. I looked it up. So now, now that we know you got that one wrong, (laughs) I'm going to give you a hint and see if you can narrow it down. All right? Mm -hmm. It is a frozen treat. Oh, like one of those, um, I want to see like the ice cream sandwich or like the bar. It is one of those two, but which one? I know I personally prefer the sandwich. But I feel like more people like the bar. You are correct. The Mickey ice cream bar is the number one food item sold across all Disney parks globally. And at Walt Disney World alone, there are over 3 million of those. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Lots of Mickey ice cream bars. All right. Here's a tricky, tricky one for you. I I just said we don't stay in. So great. But, but let me ask you this. It may or may not apply. We haven't stayed in all the hotels. We only stay in Deluxe, so that's why I was saying. It, it, you don't have a full view, Yeah. but let's see if you can guess it anyway. Which hotel at Walt Disney World has the most rooms? Ooh. I, I, you think it would be Saratoga, but it's not. Because it's not the Deluxe, you said. I did give you that hint, and that is correct. It is not. You'd think, wouldn't you? But haha. I thought of that too, but then as I thought of it more, it sort of made sense that it's not a deluxe. I'll, I'll go through those in a minute, just because that's where we stay. But but is it like a Disney hotel, or is it yes, just like on site? No, no, I'm talking about Disney resort okay. hotels on property. Uh, I did not know the answer to this. Pop Century? You got it right. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. I am impressed. How did you do that? 
Well, you see, when my friend and I, we were doing this research for like where to stay and we were on a little bit of a budget for a project and we were looking at the rooms and I just remember like thinking it was a lot bigger than of some of the other hotels. <laughs> so that is correct. Pop Century has 2,880 rooms. <laughs> And number two is Coronado Springs, a moderate, with 2,466. And that does include the new tower, in case you're wondering. Now, since we're deluxe resort peeps, I want to ask you, which of the deluxe resort hotels has the most rooms? Maybe? Well, it's not Bay Lake, because I feel like it would have to be both of them. Both of them combined would obviously be that. It's not It's not a both. It's just the deluxe. Oh, okay. It's just the main resort. It does not include Disney Vacation Club rooms. Oh, not Disney Vacation Club rooms? Yeah, just the, oh, okay. just the hotel. Uh, maybe Contemp. Oh, so close. <laughs> Contemp is number two. That, but that wasn't the question. No. That was not the question. The, the qu- contemporary is number two with 1,008 rooms, but there is one deluxe resort that has more than that. I don't know. I, I was going to say the Grand, but... Grand is number three with only 867 rooms. Okay, but with the villas, it would be number one. So I will tell you the answer. Villas. Number one is Animal Kingdom Lodge. Oh, see, I wasn't even thinking about that. It's the biggest, which is one of our complaints about it. There's <laughs> lots of walking there. Oh, 1, yeah, 1,293 so rooms. There's 12, too much walking. <laughs> 1,293 rooms in Animal Kingdom. So, but Pop Century is almost double that. Wow. All right. We're just, we were talking about the most. Now, this question is about the least, in a way. Number three, before we go back to our travel tips, which is the smallest park at Walt Disney World by area? The smallest park. So it's not Epcot. Definitely not Epcot. Uh, Trying to picture the maps here. Maybe magic. That is correct. I'm surprised you got that because I don't think I got it. I think I I said Hollywood to myself. No. Magic Kingdom is indeed the smallest park at Walt Disney World. 63.6666%. All right. You did very well there. You're off to a good start. Two out of three. I uh, So right now, my score is 20 out of 100. All right. Now, let's go back to our Disney travel tips. And this travel tip... This is my favorite one. This actually... Which is my least favorite one. This this is all about you. We came up with this tip, or... Well, we came up with it when discovered it because of you. So why don't you explain what it is and how it works? And I'll fill in the blanks. So basically, this unfair tip is related to limiting your kids to a certain budget. So then they decide what's important to buy instead of you just buying them everything they want. Exactly. Ridiculous. You know, on our first few trips, even when Amelia was young, you know, you take your kids and if you're like us, you want to buy them all this stuff. But then we realized now Amelia's an only child, so it was even worse. She got a little spoiled. So she was buying everything. I don't so that, know what you're talking about. I don't know how old you are. Maybe six or seven, not are, were. Maybe six or seven when we implemented this. And it did really well. So then we decided, okay, Amelia, you do not have an unlimited a budget. And what would happen is she would, you know, we'd say, okay, we'll buy it for her. Oh, God, I want this and I want that. You understand. Kids are kids. Mm-hmm. So then we gave her a budget. And we said, this is your budget for the week. And I can't remember what it was. Maybe $100 or something like Less. that. Less. Maybe 50 when we started. Whatever yeah. it was. Until I started using my own money. And now, you, I, now I don't even yeah. get a budget. It's just a, a budget. Budget. It's now it's just, okay, use your birthday money. Yeah. So we said, you can buy whatever you want, whatever you want. And the magic occurred because suddenly we were looking at things and we would go, do you want to buy? She said, oh. she was now thinking about the economics of the purchases and the value. And it was it was actually truly magic to see you turning down things that otherwise we would have bought for you. Yeah, but now, you know what my problem was? See, I, six or seven-year-old, you know, had my own child, and his name was Duffy the Disney Bear, and his clothes were eating up all of my money. They're but very I, expensive. They are very expensive. And Duffy didn't even get his own budget. And so now I was spending all my money... Buying him clothes. See, you were being a good parent. And do you remember this? Do I you, think Duffy should get his own budget. Do you, yeah, well, it comes out of your money now. No, right no. Here. Now, do you remember what was the main item you bought the very first year we did this? 
you waited till the end, you looked at it a few times, and then you decided, yes, I want to buy this. Do you remember what it was? No, but I remember the last, I remember one of the re- most recent trips we went on that I wanted this macaron, and I wanted it so bad, and it was $60. It was so expensive. Oh, that was a pillow, the macaron yeah, smelling it was the de- pillow. And I remember I was bugging this the whole trip, the delicious into macaron, and... On the last day, I counted. I had literally like just, I was five cents short. It was devastating. And then I got five. Well, cents I will and I remind it. you what it is you bought. It was the Merida archery set. Yes, I and, remember. And I will tell you, you loved this thing. That little plastic sort of play archery. I have so many videos. Of Amelia me being used. Amazing. She used that thing for years, and that actually did lead her into real archery and getting a real bow and all that stuff. So it was very cool. And you picked it out yourself. You said it. You saw it the first day, and we said, "No, wait. You know, you don't need to buy it now." And you went through the whole week looking at other things, not buying them. Maybe a couple of little things you bought, but at the end, you said, "Yes, I still want this." So it was really good. So if you have kids and you're struggling with this, try giving them a Disney allowance and putting them in control of a certain amount of money. It really worked with us, <laughs> with Amelia, for us with but Amelia. If, yes, but if they do have a Duffy or Shelley and they like to buy her clothes, I, I recommend giving your six or seven year old an, another budget for their stuffed animal because that really eats up a lot of money. Those are very expensive clothes. They're more expensive than people clothes. It's ridiculous. All right. That is tip 2A. Tip. Yes. And tip, I have a fun fact about what I bought with Merida bow that one of the arrows after, broke after, oh, probably like two or three years. So I used this thing for yeah, ages. She used it a lot. <laughs> but one of the arrows broke. And so we got rid of the set, but we still have the broken arrow. <laughs> There you go. It's, a, it's your memento. The whole rest of the thing, because I had like real archery and stuff. And I, it, I was thinking about this when I made this Merida archery camp over on our shop at <laughs> 1923mainstreet.redbubble.com. I did put a Merida archery camp design, so you can get it on a shirt or anything else. Pretty cool. And I was thinking about this when I did it. All right. We are going to move back to trivia tips, everyone. So see, get your see pens if I'll get ready. Three out of three. And your thinking caps on. Here is question number four. Which ride is in a different land in every Disney park that it's in. Ooh. And it is in several. Different land in every park. What is it? It's either... I want to say it's either Big Thunder or Space Mountain. I want to say that. Would I be correct in saying it's one of the two? You would not. So think through... No, now I'm you're not, just rhyming I'm not, things off. I'm, this is not my final answer. Okay, I'm I'm still thinking. Well, you've already lost the question. This, this is not my... I never said this was my final answer. I'm taking that one, but <laughs> keep thinking. Hey! Keep thinking. hey! No, no, no. Keep thinking. Uh-uh. I will give you a few more seconds. What? No, what, what, what is this time limit? Oh, um... Like tower? No. So <laughs> the know. answer is, and you'll say, oh... Haunted Mansion. Oh. <laughs> Disneyland, it's in New Orleans Square. It's a thing. Well, Disney World, it's in Liberty Square. When we were in Disneyland Paris, it's over in Frontierland or whatever. See, that's that not fair is. because we didn't go on it. We Where? In Paris. Well, we saw it. It was closed the last well, time we were there. I remember seeing Phantom it. Phantom Manor. So the that's, most recent time we were there, I remember so seeing it. That's was, interesting, huh? It's in a different land in every park. Because I, I don't really like care about that ride. So. Now, here's, here's another cool <laughs> Unfair one. Unfair question. I, I did not know this. I can't believe I did not know this until I found it trying to find... See, I'm trying to find trickier ones for you, not the basic, easy trivia question. But questions. I want the basic, easy trivia question. <laughs> so... And I hope you know the answer to this. <laughs> oh, boy. So which band declined Rock and Roller Coaster before it was offered to Aerosmith? So Disney approached... How on earth would I know? Yeah, that's a, I'll have to give you a hint. So Disney Appro... <laughs> I didn't know this. Disney approached another very famous rock band, and they said, no, we don't want to be associated with this ride. And then they approached Aerosmith, and Aerosmith did take it. Rolling Stones? No, or but Twisted that, Sister. That, that's a good guess. I don't know. So they, I don't know. They are, <laughs> did you say Twisted Sister? I don't know. Okay, so uh, I'm not sure you know this band, so yeah, this one might be. there. But they're one of the most, let me put. ACDC. No, let, stop guessing. Let me say. They're, they're one of the most famous and well-known bands in the world. Your Rolling Stones was the closest. It would have been like, I, I don't love them, actually. I like a few of their songs, but I like Aerosmith much more. But they are one of the most famous bands in the world, and they are from England. 
I don't know. And their name starts with a letter. And it's two. It's a letter and a number. Huh? The answer is U2. U2 was approached by Disney to be the theme band for Rock and Roller Coaster. And they said no. And I did not know that. Isn't that like 20-year-olds that just came around like two years ago? No, they are. That's Bono and his... Many, many, many Who? favorite songs. The lead singer. I have no idea okay. what you're talking about. So that was an unfair You're question. aging yourself. Well, you get it wrong. That was anyway. an unfair question. I wasn't even born. I, I did like your Rolling Stones guess. I've never even heard of that band. All right. Here's another tricky one. When viewed, this is the third one before we, I, we go back to our final tip. When viewed from above, what is the shape of Animal Kingdom Park? Animal Kingdom Park is shaped like something when you look at it. From an aerial view. Trying to visualize the map. It's like... And think of the park itself and things in it. It's obviously related to the park. Like a bone? No, that's a good guess, (laughs) though. Should I give you a hint? Because it could... It's not an animal or anything related to an animal. I don't know. I feel like... It's a continent. Oh. uh, Oh. uh, (laughs) Okay, this is... This should be helpful, but... It's a continent that also like, exists in the park. I want to say like it's uh, a- Asia. I don't know. Uh, Asia, Africa. Which one? Asia. It's Asia, Africa, Europe, North America. So <laughs> give me an answer. <laughs> I don't um Asia? Incorrect. Africa. It, it is Africa. South it America. Is, yeah, it is Africa. Antarctica. All right. We're going to leave. Philippines. We're going to leave the last four. I don't know. Till the end. These are bad questions. These are good questions. No, they're bad questions. So tell us after this episode how many of these you got right. They're good questions. I'd be getting them right. They're hard questions because I don't want you to get it easy. You might do better on the left. That's not fair. You've got four more here. At most I can get a 60%. Our final tip is one that people don't think enough about uh, in my experience. Really? I would have thought this would be the easiest one. And, you know, given this year with everything that's going on, I think it's even more important to give a shout out and tip number three is what be nice to the cast members be nice to disney cast members how if you go frequently how many times have you been there and seen someone yelling at a cast member all the time now we've had bad ones where you know they weren't they should be be nice to guests (laughs) it would be their tip but generally and especially this year when there's been so many layoffs and we feel so bad for cast members and everybody's been doing so much to try to help them out in a really tough year. This is a real shout out to cast members. We love you. There was one year when we wore those cast member shirts, remember? Oh, yeah. What did they say? I made special shirts. Thank you, cast yeah, members thank- for 50 or 48 or whatever. Yeah, I think it was on my 48. Years of Disney Travel, something. <laughs> yeah, know. so we wore thank you Disney cast member shirts. I mean, and I know a lot of people go, and not a lot, but some people give them little gifts or they make things. And But we just wore shirts that said thank you Disney cast members. And or, you know, you could just say the two-word phrase, thank you. Yeah. But I thought it was sort of fun wearing those shirts. And yeah. they noticed, and they got tears in their eyes, and it was subtle. So, you know, they... They put up with They us. really appreciate it. Yeah, they put up with all of us every day in crowds and fireworks and all that stuff. And we've had nieces and nem- nephews as cast members and some good friends who are cast members right now and going through the tough year that everyone's going through. So, But just do you remember that one guy who stood in front of your kid when you were watching a parade or that really loud neighbor you had? Well, cast members deal with all of them. And I'll tell you what, you know, when we first came up, and this isn't why you do it, but... When you're nice to cast members, they're nice to you. And we've had, we're just nice to people generally. We try to be anyway, right? (laughs) Especially cast members, because we really do appreciate what they do and Mm -hmm. what they put up with. But there was times when we've been gifted things by cast members, extra fast passes. Not even on purpose. Not even, no, just because we're chatting with them and, you know, and being nice or, or helping them out if somebody else was mean to them and supporting them saying, you know, yeah, yeah, we. I couldn't do what you do. In fact, I couldn't. I could not put up with guests, unruly guests, day in and day out. So well, that's true. It's a, it takes a special <laughs> person to do those jobs. So I want thank to be you, a cast Disney member. cast members. So that is our travel tip: be nice to cast members, and you know, good things beget good things. Mm. Just a little tip. But that's not why you do it. That's not why you do it. But y- you feel good when you're being nice it, to someone. It's true. You do. All right, so that is our third tip. Those are three tips that you don't hear as often, so we just want to throw those in in this year end and as we start a new year. And yes. Now, I will move back to round out the show. 
for the final four. So All you've right. got you've got to come around on some of these to get your numbers back up to a <laughs> passing grade. All right. Question number seven, trivia question, Walt Disney World. Which was the first mountain to appear in the Magic Kingdom? Ooh. There are three mountains. Splash, thunder, and space. Correct. Which of those three was the first to appear? Splash, thunder, or space? None of them were there when it opened. Oh, okay. Uh, ooh, good. Qu- that's a good question. Uh, it's harder for you because you're young. Yeah, that's not fair. But I just wanted to see if you know. I feel that it might be space or, th- um, sorry, not space. I feel like it might not be space, but I don't actually know. All right, give me an answer. <gasps> ooh. Splash. Incorrect. It is space. Space <laughs> Mountain. Appeared I was like, I'm going to rule it out and then that's going to be the 1975, answer. just a few years after it opened. And that was really exciting for us because it was really exciting, super fast, and a real thrill. That's what astronaut what Gordon Cooper. That, Coop- that is astronaut Gordon Cooper. <laughs> there used to be a video of him right by the boarding area. And he said, if you have a heart condition, bad back, or other physical limitations, you may want to bypass this ride and go on to the RCA home of future living. It's real exciting, too. <laughs> And the RCA Home of Future Living, you know when you go on that escalator out of Space Mountain at the end? Yes. That's where it was, and it was just oh. a, it was just those little scenes. But yeah, it, it was the first mountain. All right, here's another one. Question number eight. What is the tallest ride at Walt Disney World? Ooh. The tallest ride. See, you'd think, you'd think it would be Tower of Terror, but I feel that might be a trick question. And so, it might. I don't know. Well, you have to make a guess. It's not fair. The tallest ride coming in at 60.8 meters is what? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a really good question, actually. Uh, in five, four, three, two. Space? One, oh. Everest? Yes, it is Expedition Everest, but I don't give it to you. I get 0. 0.5. That is All 5%. Right. We'll give you 0. 0.5. Very good because you came around from Tower of Terror. It's not, I, knew it was, I knew it wasn't Tower because that would be a trick. Because everyone would think it's Tower, but it's not because it's a trick question. Yes, so Expedition Everest. All right, question number nine. Inside the haunted mansion, in the stretching room, oh boy. the girl on the tightrope... As the stretching room reveals, Mm -hmm. what is she standing over? Alligator's mouth. Very good. I love that painting. It's my favorite painting. She's also wearing a pink dress, holding a white umbrella up with her left hand. I I know everything about that painting. Oh, very good. That was an excellent question. I think you're still still not going to make it, but here's another sort of tricky one. It could be tricky. Number 10, final trivia question, everyone. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. What is the fastest ride at Walt Disney World. Wouldn't it be? If you think about it, it'll narrow down to just a couple. And I will mm-hmm. admit to you... It's not rockin'. I got this wrong. You you said rockin', didn't you? I'm not going to tell you what you I said. You said rockin'. <laughs> uh, Tron Coaster. <laughs> that currently exists. <laughs> oh. In December 2020, as we record this. What is the fastest ride at Walt Disney World? What have you narrowed it down to? I narrowed it down to Rockin', Space, Everest, and the one that's right that I'm missing. <laughs> that is correct. You did not name it. Exactly. Giving you that hint. I was going to say, there's one that's the right one that I'm missing because it has to be faster than Rockin'. Oh, Tower of Terror? No. Well, it's fast when it drops. The answer is, fast. there are also two T's. Test Track. Oh. The Test Track and clocked in at oh, its yeah. highest speed of 64.9 miles an hour, which just edges out Rock and Roller Coaster, which yeah. I believe is number two. I was going to say, I knew, I knew you'd say rockin'. <laughs> so there you have it. Those were some good trivia questions. I hope you enjoyed them. I, I'm happy I stumped Amelia. Some are not fair because she, if you... Yeah, that's not... The band one, not yeah, fair. It, band one, and if you grew up with the parks as I did, you will know the first mountain and things like that. But I wanted to... I didn't want to make it easy on it's you. not fair. I don't want to give you easy questions. I push you. I want you to gain your knowledge. So 
Anyway, we hope you really enjoyed this episode. It's uh, We're looking forward to a new year, and hopefully you're with us in 2021. We have a, some fun new things coming this year. Yes. And we'll reveal those in an upcoming episode. So we hope you enjoyed this Disney travel tips and trivia episode. And we hope you're having a great holiday and a happy new year if it hasn't happened yet. And a happy new year, even if it has. And have a magical day, everyone. Bye-bye.